chapter delegation and interdepartment coordination delegation of authority the process by which authority passes from one managerial level to another is known as delegation or organization grow is in size and complexity no one person can perform all the task or exercises all the authority that is needed to accomplish goals delegation of authority is not the same as division of work as henry fayol says division of work permits reduction of the number of objects to which attention and effort must be directed has been recognized as the best mean of making use of individuals and of group of people delegation of authority denotes the superior vesting decision making power in his subordinates no one can delegate an authority which he himself does not have delegation is one of the most important skill a manager must process the overworked manager are often those who do not know how to delegate for they lack the skill to get results through others an individual can perform limited work in a day all by himself but through delegation to division dividing his load and sharing his responsibility with others he can accomplish much more no manager and no organization can run smoothly and effectively without delegation elements of delegation the number of delegation marks the effectiveness of the manager and influences the relationship between the superior and the subordinate delegation is the process where a manager divides the work assigned to him so as to get help from others in accomplishing the same it involves the following four steps that are indivis- indivisible first is the determination of results expected and next is the assignment of tasks and next is the delegation of authority for accomplishing these tasks and the next is the ex- exaction of responsibility of their accomplishment looked at differently there these four steps have three elements responsibility authority and accountability delegation is the entrust entrustment of responsibility and authority to another and he the creation of accountability for performance let us briefly consider these three elements responsibility responsibility refers to the activities which must be performed to carry out the task assigned responsibility can be delegated authority authority refers to the power and rights entrusted to enable performance of the risk assigned or delegated certain authority is imperative to shoulder a given responsibility in organizations people derive authority mainly from two sources position and personal position authority is related to power of decision making reward and punishment personal authority refers to the expert knowledge and certain qualities which are part of the personality of an individual manager position authority can be delegated but not personal authority authority could be formal or informal here we refer to formal authority that is clear structured and communicated to all accountability account accountability is the obligation to carry out responsibility and exercise authority as per established standards or norms it is an obligation to account for and report upon the discharge of responsibility or use of authority 
accountability cannot be delegated the person who delegates continues to be responsible to his superior for what he had delegated as well since accountability cannot be delegated the accountability of superiors for the act of their subordinates is absolute by the same token we see that the delegatee is accountable to the delegator to the extent he is delegated responsibility and authority for example if the line managers are not given the responsibility to train the operators they cannot be held accountable for the operators proficiency while accountability about always moves upwards responsibility and authority moves downwards in a hierarchy a person can be accountable only to one superior for delegated responsibility and authority accountability is easy to establish if the standard and measure of performance are predetermined informal delegation so far we have discussed about formal delegation in the exercise of authority defined by organizational role formal delegation is effective to the extent of the acceptance and respect for formal authority informal delegation occurs because people want to do something but not because they are told to do it cuts red tape it is something that is not formally required to be done when there is problem in the exercise of formal authority informal delegation may become handy bottom up delegation delegation takes place in fact not the exact delegated but to the extent that the subordinate is willing to carry out the orders received it may be possible to enforce willingness to do the job itself but not to comply with the standards or performance established by superior in large organizations informal group leaders without formal authority assume authority to res- restrict output and workers accept such informal delegation the people in the group will bring down production to the level they consider fair rather than comply with the order of their superior lateral delegation in modern de- organization few jobs are independent and team work may result in man- members of the group entrusting informally their responsibility and authority to others in the group at their level the process of entrustment that occurs when teamwork develops among members of a group is called lateral delegation the problems in delegation we shall examine here four key problems in delegation what to delegate how much to delegate how far down to delegate how to deal with employees resistance to accept delegation what to delegate we will discuss about it if a manager does not delegate he will end up doing what his subordinates must be doing he if he delegates what is what he should be doing himself his leadership position would be in job parity and there would be conflict among subordinates the first step is in effective delegation is for the manager to analyze his job and to determine in principle what he should or he should not delegate the following points helps in this regards no manager can effectively delegate responsibility and authority of initiating and making final decision on planning organizing coordinating and controlling the activities and positions that report to him 
such responsibilities and authority should be reserved for his own performance a large part of the company large part of the work in every management position consists of activities that are routine and repetitive these lend themselves rapidly readily to delegation once delegated this form the main task that the subordinates perform how much to delegate usually the dilemma is how much authority to delegate than that of responsibility a salesman appointed to sell the products of the company should have the authority to approach customers in the name of the company offer them the products for sale at certain price and assure growth and delivery beyond this minimum authority the supervisor should decide on other matters if any that arises like whether the salesman can rent a car for commuting whether the salesman can hire people to assist him whether the salesman can offer discount or credit the authority of the salesman can on each of these problems probable issues needs to be clarified preferably before he is asked to show, uh, shoulder the responsibilities while can while one can have rules and procedures laid down for routine questions that arose in the past as and when new questions crop a prompt decision need to be taken there is a popular misconception that authority should always be delegated equal to responsibility but people will responsibly responsibility for coordination and control usually withhold a part of the authority and delegate only such authority as is commensurate commensurate with responsibility now we will go to the question how far down to delegate to what level in a hierarchy can responsibility and authority be delegated people who do not work should have the responsibility those people those with responsibility should have commensurate authority taken together it means that is it is necessary to delegate authority to all those who do not who do the work at the operating level how to deal with the employee resistance employee must resist employee may resist accepting delegated authority for a variety of reasons first is lack of proper job information next is lack of skills training supportive tools and equipment or self confidence next is uncertain about the authorities with a vis responsibilities next is lack of proper reward or sense of personal gain for the individual and the next is inertia and avoidance manager have the formal authority to direct others and can invoke reward and punishment system to enforce this format authority but to exercise informal authority to delegate they should earn the confidence and respect of their subordinates to be sure it is imperative the ma- that managers check what their subordinates are capable of doing the remove the affirmation aforementioned inhibiting factors prerequisites for effective delegation delegation is an art not a science it depends on the personality skills and attitudes concerning to actors delegators who one who delegates and delegatee 
one who was delegated. The following are some of the essential prerequisites for effective delegation. A. Climate of openness, trust and confidence among employees at all levels and a culture of team work and operation. B. The two psychological hurdles in delegation, namely lack of faith in the competence and of subordinates and fear that the subordinates may outshine them deter manager from delegating. The manager should not, ha should not have any feeling of insecurity that the by delegating they work they would be making themselves redundant. C. Goals should be established and made clear. Every person in an organization should know what his contribution to the organization is. In accomplishing his goals, he can formulate the objective of delegation to so that delegation is done with a purpose and becomes effective. The machine operators may not be happy with running the machine. He uh, would be happy to know how the outcome of his uh, effort contributes to organizational purpose. D. People who carry out work should have clearly defined responsibility and authority. Job descriptions or positions guides should clearly state the objectives, responsibilities, relationships and limits of authority of each position. Clear definition of responsibility and authority at each position eliminates the scope for confusion that duplication and overlap in entrustment of duties would cause. E. Motivation Motivation is important because the manager who wants to delegate should be able to motivate people to do what he wants done, willingly and enthusiastically. As Louis Allen puts it, motivation is the moving force in delegation. F. Make delegation complete. Delegation is supposed to reduce a manager's workload, but if not properly done, it may increase the workload. There are often problems as to whether ads, what stays and how often should be subordinate check back with his boss. The problem can be resolved if the assignment is clear cut and the second Subordinate is told how the assignment will be coordinated and motivated by the boss. And the next is the pro boss specifies to be subordinates at what stage, in what form and how often he should provide him with feedback on the progress. And fourth is the boss provides counseling and guidance. Once an assignment is delegated, the boss should inter intervene only to private guidance but not withhold his approval for specific actions involved in completing the task. To delegate, a com to delegate complete assignment or task requires a certain sense of faith and self-control on the part of boss in not intervening but giving counsel and advice. Likewise, the subordinate should exercise discipline in making choice of course, uh, of course of action in carrying out the task. Delegating complete task revives managers from details and provide opportunity to subordinates to learn to be independent and feel a sense of fulfillment in work. G. Train The manager should help him pre help in preparing their subordinates to accept delegation. 
सच नीड इज ऑल द मोर फेल्ड इन द केस ऑफ सब ऑर्डिनेट्स हु शो अ टेंडेंसी टू डिपेंड ऑन द बॉसेस दैन बी इंडिपेंडेंट मैनेजर्स शुड देयर फोर केयरफुली आइडेंटिफाई द वीकनेस डेवलपमेंट पोटेंशियल एंड एटीट्यूड्स कंडक्टिव टू एक्सेप्टिंग एंड मेकिंग अ सक्सेस ऑफ डेलीगेटेड अथॉरिटी ट्रेनिंग इन डेलीगेशन शुड इंक्लूड अप्रेजल ऑफ करंट परफॉर्मेंस काउंसलिंग फॉर इम्प्रूवमेंट एंड कोचिंग फॉर ऑन द जॉब एच नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज इस्टेब्लिशमेंट कंट्रोल्स Even after delegating, the manager continues to be accountable. So there is need for him to control without limiting the effectiveness of delegation. The more complete is the delegation, the more comprehensive should be the system of control. B. Self control is the best in. establishing control for the delegation the person who, to whom responsibility and authority are delegated should participate in setting standards that are to measure his performance so that he can understand and accept them he should also be able to measure the evaluate measure and evaluate his own performance if the control system are auto and transparent thus it is very to achieve control without limiting the effectiveness of delegation centralization and decentralization centralization and decentralization are extension of delegation delegation refers mainly to entrustment of respons- responsibility and authority from one person to another downwards transfer of responsibility and authority at individual level is referred to as delegation and when the same is done organization wide in a systematic way it is known as decentralization Dele- decentralization refers to systematic delegation of authority in an organization and organization is considered centralized to the degree that authority is not delegated but concentrated at higher level of management in juxtaposition the to the degree that authority is delegated and organization is considered decentralized as henry fiol puts it everything that goes that goes to increase the importance of the subordinates role in decentralization everything which goes to reduce it is centralization the norms centralization and decentralization are meaningful only in a relative sense no organization can operate on a completely decentralized basis since all authority to make decisions would rest at the lowest managerial level and make it difficult to achieve coordination similarly except very small firms no organization can be completely decentralized it is appropriate to recall the experience of two of the largest automobiles corporation in the us the ford motor company at one time was said to have suffered due to centralization while the general motors suffered due to decentralization this example bears out the impracticability of complete centralization or complete decentralization factors influencing centralization an organization or a manager needs to have some reserve authority to indi- indi- integrate the efforts in an organization and achieve the desired degree of coordination and control required to accomplish the specific goals 
Centralization also facilitates personal leadership when the company is small to provide the integration and uniformity of action and to handle emergencies. Factors influencing decentralization Decentralization becomes important and imperative when an organization grows bigger. The main purpose of decentralization is to ease the burden of top executives, the warning signals that points to a need for decentralization can be had from the problems in planning and control of operation. Neglect of uh, proactive strategies in performance to routine fire fighting operators operations poor proliferation of personal staff around top executives and mushrooming of committees decentralization also facilitates diversification and divisionalization and is in, is in fact a necessary accomplishment accompaniment if not a prerequisite decentralization also encourages and motivates managers to better performance because it affords them opportunities to take more important decisions gives them a flexibility and authority in their functioning how to decentralize clearly as organizations grow, expand, or diversify, the need for decentralization increases. The moot question then is how to decentralize. The first step in decentralization, though it may sound paradoxical, is decentralization, is centralization. As in the case of delegation here again there is need for some reserve authority for coordination and control at the nerve center of the organization that is the corporate headquarters planning overall guidance and direction for such sub need and division or department of the organization need to be formulated coordinated and controlled at the headquarters if the organizational activities are somewhat homogeneous, say confined to one industry such as automobiles, it is relatively easy to develop sound policies and control system for the decentralized work units or profit centers in the organization. But when the organization is highly diversified, the deals and deals in a variety of business such as engineering, textiles, tea and chemicals, it is difficult to develop uniform policies and control system for all the work units or profit centers. Thus, the design of the administrative structure should take into account the need of the organization and of its operating units as competitive units in their own markets. Effective decentralization requires a balance of the necessary centralization of planning, organization, coordination and control while decentralized unit should be developed as autonomous business unit operating as individual profit centers with provision for effective coordination and communication. The central management team should have a well-established system for measuring, recording, and reporting operating results. Coordination Organizing involves not only division of jobs into separate work unit through division of labor, decentralization, and delegation but also relating the work units, be they division or departments, or to ensure that they pull together and work in harmony. 
linking or relating various parts and activities of an organization to one another is known as coordination in the smallest of the smaller organization where all activities are performed by one or two person in just one unit there is little need for coordination but as activities spread and organization grow large and complex the need for coordination becomes imperative and assumes greater significance lack of coordination is a common complaint amongst most large organization the right hand does not know what the left hand is doing in an of hard reaction among employees customers and suppliers lack of coordination result is breakdown of operation delays wastes and frustrations one example of lack of coordination is the case of an organization which with different division operating on the same site one of the division was found to be auctioning raw material as scrap while another had been buying similar material from the market at the premium in other case while the factory had to cut down production for want of sim- storage space to stock finished goods at the plant there was shortage in the market for the same product why its coordination a problem any organization will have certain objectives people are grouped into an organization usually into separate departments such as production finance marketing personnel etc each department is allocated different task one deals with production of goods and another deals with their distribution one departments may plan a second may develop new products and a third carries out actual production there are a number of service functions such as finance maintenance material materials personnel etc each with a different task through all are collectively directed to accomplish the organizational goal the process of internal specialization and task differentiation grows with the overall size of the organization over the years modern organizations acquired centrifugal tendencies with individual and departments straining to pursue different paths towards functional autonomy as a sequel loyalty of managers today is generally more towards their own specialization or departments than to the organization within the departments there may be high degree of homogeneity and commitment to the functional task but the more such homogeneity and commitment the greater the problem in achieving integration between the among department such problems accumulate and aggravate in situations where allocation of different objects objectives targets and resources to departments causes perceptual different difficulties and misunderstanding sometimes the reactive approaches of top management may reinforce the centrifugal tendencies and twist the functional autonomy than promote what is known in current management literal lit, literature as literature as subordinate goals that promote and preserve awareness of an overriding organizational objectives for example for example in one organization the chairman of company issued direct tips to plan management that they should stop overtime payments with immediate effect 
Three months later, when the chairman noticed that overtime is still being paid in some department, he issued another directive, this time to the finance department not to make overtime payment, but even if the time managers authorize such payments. This new directive stained the relations between finance and production department. When each of the several departments in an organization have different objectives to follow, some of them at least may conflict with those of another departments in the day-to-day -day operations. The vigorous pursuit of sectional objectives continues if rewards system encourages such behavior. The conflict between sales and production in a British company with six sales departments and 18 different plants was studied by A. J. M. Sachs and B. and J. Batts. There was constant conflict between the production sites which wanted to limit the range of production in order to increase the value of output for each one and reduce unit costs and the sales department which sought to be forced production to comply with the consumer's preferences regardless of the merits of standardization. Among different sales departments also there was conflict with each department completing the completing for earliest possible delivery date of its customers dis, disregarding the system of priorities laid down by the company. The company intended to give priority to export orders as also to certain large and important customers. The sales clerks and being recruited from production and they are they were able to organize preferential treatment for their own customers through informal deals and the production staff to overcome the above problems the company had set up a sales organization liaison department sold between sales and production SOLDS main function were to secure information and production capability and sales requirements to formulate a comprehensive price policy and to maintain statistics production producing reports for the chairman and the board. Detailed instructions were drawn up for the how sold was operate. For instance, order to plant are to be allocated based on plant's capacity to meet delivery schedules as required by customers. Establishing a new departments for coordination and laying down new producers Procedures help to achieve interdepartmental coordination. Warnings on interdepartmental conflict. Common warning sign of interdepartmental conflict include the following: a. Persistent conflict between departments. When the same matters of conflict keep recurring between or among departments, conflict becomes embedded and persistent. If this is not diagnosed and dealt early enough, the departments involved start accepting it as normal and the becomes arising out of such conflict tend to be taken for granted. b. Proliferation of committees. Proliferation of committees while committees are constituted in organization to bring about effective coordination on important issues affecting more than one departments, their 
प्रो प्रोलीफरेशन में पैराडॉक्सिकली रिवेल द बेसिक वीकनेस इन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विच लैक ऑफ कोऑर्डिनेशन प्रोलीफरेशन ऑफ कोऑर्डिनेशन कमिटीज फज इंटर डिपार्टमेंटल डिस्प्यूट एंड डिले द रिजोल्यूशन ऑफ इंटर डिपार्टमेंटल कॉन्फ्लिक्ट सी ओवरलोडिंग ऑफ टॉप मैनेजमेंट द कॉमन टेंडेंसी अमॉन्ग डिपार्टमेंटल हेड इज टू एक्सपेक्ट द जनरल मैनेजर और द चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव टू इंटरवेन्यू इन मैटर रिक्वेसाइटिंग कॉर्डिनेशन बिटवीन डिपार्टमेंट्स इफ इश्यूज आर नॉट रिजोल्व ऑफ एन एन ऑफ बाई डिपार्टमेंटल हेड अमॉन्ग दम सेल्स द टॉप मैनेजमेंट विल बी प्री ऑक्यूपाइड मोर विद सच मैटर्स दैन डील विद दियर मेन फंक्शन ऑफ पॉलिसी प्लानिंग एंड रिलेशनशिप विद इम्पॉर्टेंस कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट्स आउटसाइड द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन द टॉप मैनेजमेंट ओवरलोड इज अनदर साइन ऑफ इन एडिकुएट कॉर्डिनेशन डी द रिचुअल ऑफ रेड टेप कॉर्डिनेशन कैन टेक प्लेस थ्रू यूज ऑफ फॉर्मल प्रोसीजर्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल द प्रोसीजर में रिक्वायर दैट द टू कंसर्न डिपार्टमेंट शुड कंसल्ट ईच अदर ऑन सर्टन स्पेसिफाइड मैटर्स बट मैनेजर्स मे नॉट फॉलो दिस और टेक इट सीरियसली वेन प्रोसीजर्स आर नॉट फॉलोड और कट शॉर्ट प्रॉब्लम्स में एग्रेवेटेड the the purpose of adhering to procedures is not to perceptual perceptual the red tape as a ritual where procedures are redundant or inappropriate they need to be modified than being ignored e empire building once coordination is provided at the level higher than the departments the persons forming performing the role of coordinators may like to pre perpetuate the red tape as a ritual where procedures are redundant or inappropriate they need to be modified than being ignored e empire building once coordination is provided at the level higher than the department the person performing the role for coordinators may like to pre- perpetuate the institution of coordination and strengthen their role by consciously consciously endeavoring to avoid direct cooperation and coordination among departments where coordination seeks to monopolize and block initiative initiate at departmental level to achieve harmony in goals and actions as peer level the writing on the wall is clear complaints point f complaints for constituents lack of interdepartmental coordination leads to unsatisfactory performance and affect the quality of service and relation between the organization and its constituents like the customers suppliers government etc when different departments of an organization provide conflicting information it affects the credibility of the organization a simple exercise which can help to pinpoint the areas of difficulty is to request the managers and members of the units to complete a form of a kind shown in figure this particular design was originally developed for use in an investigation of an airlines and example of an completed form in which the respondent has scored in relationship shown it in his perception coordination between flight operations and in f- 
flight service is posing serious problems the form however can be adapted to suit any type of organization analysis of the response help to understand where there are shared perception and where problems of coordination exist and whether there is a large measure of agreement across the organization on the location of the problematic horizontal working relation if response respondents are also asked to give examples of the performance problems failing arising from the lack of coordination the data may provide a useful basis to work towards revolve, resolving problems and achieving effective coordination approaches to coordination interdepartmental cooperation and coordination are imperative for the success of any organization coordination is easy if the degree of differentiation among different department is less successful companies involve effective machine mechanism and procedures to strike a balance between the requisite degree of differentiation and requisite degree of interdependence among departments function james d thompson classified internal independence of work unit or function into three types pooled indirect interdependence sequential or one way interdependence and reciprocal two way interdependence pooled indirect interdependence is a situation where the activities of different departments or different uh, different departments or division are not directly dependent on each other the advertising department is essentially independent from shipping and receiving departments yet they are interdependent in the sense that each is part of same enterprise failure of either could threaten the entire company and thus other departments each departments make a discrete contribution to the organization and is in turn supported by it the degree of co- coordination required here is minimum in case where the output from one department become the inputs for the other input for the other sequential one way interdependence exists this type of interdependence occurs in processor industry process industries the example shown in panel b of figure b of the brewery here greater degree of coordination is required a sequence in which the process occurs reciprocal two way interdependence it occurs when output from one becomes input for the others and vice versa such two way interdependence occurs between maintenance and operations unit here close coordination is needed because problems in either will be quickly felt by the others james thompson list three main categories of interdependence mechanism to achieve coordination a is integration through standardization this involves establishing rules or procedures that channel the action of each job holding or department into a direction consistent with the action of others b plans and schedules can be established to integrate the action of separate units in integration through 
planning is somewhat more flexible than standardization in that the plans can be modified quickly. C. Integration can be occurred through mutual adjustment. This involves transmission of information directly between people and mutual adjustment of their action in the light of that information. The traditional bureaucratic approach which is common to most of our organization relies heavily on coordination through standardization and planning. Three mechanisms are available for the purpose. Firstly, an elaborate system of rules and procedures is worked out to deal with recurrent problems. Secondly, non-routine problems are handled by referring up to the hierarchy, where matters of policy and procedure require some deliberation. Committee meetings are held. These committee meetings are scheduled at regular intervals in stable condition. They are also held at short notice if the need arises. The advantage of bureaucratic system is that it operates smoothly and effectively in normal and predictable condition. But it is inadequate to meet the requirements of an organization in an ever-changing, turbulent environment. Often managers complain if we had to go through the formal channel, we would never be able to get things done on time. This could well be on aggregation clear carefully structured bureaucratic system of formal coordination minimize the dependence on informal system there is need for a balance rather than excessive reliance on formal or the informal system john child lists the various forms of coordination through lateral relationships as below in order to increasing sophistication, difficulty in design and overhead costs, usually management adopt the more sophisticated mechanism as addiction, addition to rather than simply substitutes for those mentioned higher up at the list. A. Bring about direct contact between managers or employees who share a problem. B. If departments are required to have a substantial amount of contact, one or more of their staffs will have special responsibility to realize with their center parts in the other departments. C. In case of special situation or problems where several departments need to conflict until the matter is resolved, temporary task force would be set up to deal with it with members from those departments d if such interdepartmental problems recur permanently constituted task forces or committees provide the coordination e if lateral relationships become a problem a coordinating Departments such as the sold discussed above may be created to perform the task of coordination, coordinating. F. Another t- method of coordination is through creation of product manager in multi-product organization with overall responsibility to coordinate operation required to market, develop, procedure and service a uh, product g a uh, most elaborate method is to establish a matrix organization here an attempt is made to combine integration of personnel within functionally specialized departments with their integration around a common contribution to product when they when 
एट एल डिस्कस थ्री प्रिंसिपल मोड्स ऑफ कॉर्डिनेशन फर्स्ट इज इम्पर्सनल मोड दैट इज कॉर्डिनेशन थ्रू सेटिंग प्रोग्राम्स एंड प्रोसीजर्स नेक्स्ट इज पर्सनल मोड दैट इज कॉर्डिनेशन थ्रू फीडबैक एंड द नेक्स्ट इज ग्रुप मोड दैट इज कमिटी टास्क फोर्स मीटिंग एक्सेट्रा The choice of the modes is dependent upon condition of certainty problems and interdependent and size of work units in terms of number employed as certainty increases group mode becomes appropriate since coordination requires discussion at lateral level in a hierarchy as interdependence increases there is greater needs of personal and group modes as the as the organization grows large and complex the structure need to be more formal with greater stress on inter impersonal mode whether whatever to whatever be the approach where wherever the organization choose to waste a uh, manager in a uh, coordination role it should ensure that he is given properly proper authority only then can the exercise exercise influence meaningfully over departmental heads there should be clarity about the role responsibility authority and accountability the coordinators should be non controversial and acceptable to the departments or groups they are called upon to coordinate coordinators should have the resources and staff for effective interpersonal interfunctional coordination and integration of department with if different goals and criteria of performance there is need for a climate of openness and trust the interpersonal relationship among employees and the careful cultivation of even of open confrontation for resolving conflict through a process of mutual adjustment then aggregation aggregation before interfunctional conflict reaches a point where it affects organizational performance organizations should initiate such organization de- development program as would promote teamwork and cooperation the people in the organization need to realize that united we stand divided we fall it this can occur not so much by jealousy cultivating narrow ro- narrow loyalties to one's function and specialization but the developing super ordinate goals for the entire organization summary of delegation and interdepartment coordination we observed that delegation is one of the most important skill a manager must process it has three elements responsibility authority and accountability there is need of balancing formal and informal delegation and the latter should reinforce the former the key problems in delegation include what how and how far to delegate it is important to deal with employee resistance to delegate through counseling and guidance we observed the distinction between delegation decentralization and centralization we also noted the factors influencing centralization and decentralization and the approaches to decentralization in the latter part of this the unit we have ex- examined the problems of interfunctional coordination analyze the warning signs of conflict and study the various approaches to coordination